Bohr proposed his theory in three postulates. So it's called Bohr's postulates. So according to your book, I think the first postulate is there are something called stable orbits. So in the stable orbits, electrons do not radiate energy. So what they are saying is earlier the Rutherford model was, you know, they said that the problem was as it radiates energy, meaning radiates means giving out energy. So as it gives out energy, it will fall into the nucleus, right? But then here he said that Bohr came up with the idea of saying that there are certain orbits which are, you know, stable. It's, it doesn't, you know, radiate any energy. Okay, so if you have your textbook, go to it, let's see, page number 424 contrary to the contrary to the prediction of electromagnetic theory So according to this postulate, each atom has certain definite stable states in which it can exist and each possible state has definite total energy. These are called stationary states of the atom. Okay, So it's the same thing, they explained it again. Second postulate is, so, no, second postulate is about the angular momentum, right? So third one is frequency. So, the second one is, it's called the quantization condition. So, what he said was, the angular momentum, angular momentum is an integral multiple angular momentum of the electron, right, is an integral multiple of h by 2 pi. So, what it means is L is equal to n into h by 2 pi. What is L? Angular momentum. So, this is mvr is equal to n h by 2 pi. So, this is the stable orbits. This is just the theory, but here he is giving a expression for it. Right. So, you know that from your 11th standard, you must have studied little bit about angular momentum. So, linear momentum means mass into velocity. If I multiply that with r, I will get angular momentum. Right. Take for example, if I multiply force into radius, what do I get? I will get torque. So, torque is something like angular force turning effect. Right. So, if I multiply by r, I will get the angular momentum. Or if you want to go a little bit deeply, then it should be I into omega, mass into velocity, I into omega, moment of inertia into this thing. Moment of inertia is mr square. Omega is V is equal to R omega. So, omega is equal to V by R. So, R R cancels, I will get MBR. Okay. So, either way, you can try to remember this. So, these are the side notes. You don't have to explain too much, but this is what you have to remember. So again, there is no theory or anything for this, okay, he just, just like a magic, he came up with this number. He said that, okay, angular momentum should be a multiple of h by 2 pi, okay. So how he got, you know, we don't know, but there is a later theory which, you know, proves that this is correct. So meaning, if I have the radius which is equal to this condition, r is equal to nh by mv 2 pi, then those orbits will be stable, okay. If I, if those orbits don't satisfy this means it will not be stable. Are you following it? 
See? So that means in your chemistry you must have studied that you know there is something called principal quantum number one, principal quantum number two, three like that, right? So that is what we are talking about. So n is nothing but principal quantum number one, two, three, four. So what it means is in between I cannot expect the electron to be here. So there are some specific orbits where it will be the electrons will be available only in that particular place. Is that clear? Hmm? That is what quantization condition means. Okay. Quanta means what did we say? Packets of energy. Another meaning of meaning is something like integral multiples, right? If I ask you, okay, how many people are there in your class? You can say 10, 15. You cannot say 10.5. So in between values are not available. Okay. So that is what is called quantization condition. Meaning, this is an integral multiple of h by 2 pi. What is h? Planck's constant. Planck's constant. So, the third point is Bohr's frequency condition. So, this is quantization, this is frequency condition. So, what did we say about frequency condition? So, if you had an energy level like this, right, when electron is falling from a higher energy state to a lower energy state, right, so let's say this is E2 and this is E1. So if I'm if I'm seeing electron falling from E2 to E1, right? E2 is one energy level, this is another another energy level. So if it's falling like this, what he said was this change in energy is given out as H into frequency. Right? So, if I drop something like this, so what do you think is happening? The potential energy is getting converted to kinetic energy. So, similarly, when an electron is falling from a higher energy to a lower energy, that difference is getting out as some other energy. So, what is that H nu? It will be the energy of the photon. What is photon? Hmm? Photon means we simply say the light, right? Light photons meaning electromagnetic radiation. So that means depending upon this level, right, you will be getting certain frequency. Okay. And this helped us to you know explain the line spectra which I was showing you earlier, right? Because you have certain specific levels, you don't have everywhere. That means this difference is always going to be a certain number. This difference is going to be a certain number, which means if you use this h constant, you will be getting only certain frequencies, not all the frequencies. Are you following what I am saying? So, because electrons cannot be in everywhere, right? Only it can be in only certain levels it can be there, right? Which means that difference is what is giving you certain frequencies. And that frequency is what you are seeing as, as seeing it as specific lines. Okay. So, this is what is called Bohr's third postulate frequency condition. So, as I was telling you earlier, all this light which you are seeing today, right, everywhere. Or what we are doing is using the electrical energy, we are actually exciting the electrons as it goes to a certain level and then when it falls back, that is what we are getting at as light. So, in this particular case, you are seeing different frequencies falling down. So, that is why you are seeing a white light, meaning all the things are there. But if you take some certain gases, then you will have only certain levels, which means you will be seeing only certain colors, not all the colors. Okay. A good example is sodium vapor lamp. In your high base, have you seen those yellow lamps? Right, that is your sodium vapor. So you see only yellow spectrum. I mean yellow colors. You don't see all the other colors. Similarly, I think neon is is it red? Neon lamp. Anybody seen it? So different gases will have 
different colors. So, I think neon is red. Following this, hmm? this is how all the light which you are seeing is actually produced by this method. Okay, so they may ask you these kind of questions in 2 mark and 3 mark or both positive and 5 mark, right. In addition to this, there is a small derivation, okay. This is unstable orbit, so make a note, this is what will happen in an unstable orbit. Whereas in a stable orbit, it will be spinning around in the same orbits. So, this is stable orbits. 